Well, tell us a little bit about yourself first, please, Eamon. It's great to have you. Right, thank you very much. My name is Eamon O'Boyle. I live in Dundalk since 1970. I came here to work in the De La Salle College. And in 1974, I, I, I started as a full-time guidance counsellor, having trained the previous year in UCD. So I worked as a guidance counsellor in the De La Salle and have been taking interest in all kinds of uh, various activities in the town, from drama to uh, helping the disabled and so on. Over the years, I've been involved in various organisations. Uh, I went for the town council election in 2004 and was elected for uh, for the first time uh, in June, I think, uh, 2004. And I served as t for 10 years in the town council. And in 2008, 2009, I was the vice chair of the council, the town council, and I was the chair in t uh, 2013, 14. So I've uh, been uh, involved in local issues and particularly concern for the welfare of the people of Dundalk and uh, particularly the young people that they have a future and my whole life's work was involved in trying to provide them uh, with the information to empower themselves to get the best possible uh, start in life and uh, jobs that, that, that were available at the time. So that was my, my main thing. I was involved in publishing as well. I've written 26 books in my time, uh, mainly in the careers. There were, the, uh, the big mistake I made, I should have patented it as a cure for insomnia because <laughs> five minutes... <laughs> I've written a couple of books in South yeah. and I feel your pain yeah. in that. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, a big loss. Uh, the revenue from that would be good. <laughs> oh, However... <laughs> I, in other words, I've tried various things, never made a lot of money, never made a, a lot of money, but hopefully provided a, a good service to the people that I was uh, trying to, to serve over the years. That's it, made a difference. Yeah. So how did you first become aware of the Lord Limerick Embankment? I suppose I became aware of it uh, early on. Uh, didn't by not, not an odd mention here and there, but uh, it was only when I got involved in the town council that I became more fully aware of it. And uh, uh, certainly, um, when estimates were coming up and when we we're framing a budget, money was being set aside for various uh, activities and so forth. And I uh, investigated what was the Lord Limerick Embankment and discovered to my horror that it was um, originally um, built or constructed or whatever you'd say uh, in uh, 1730, I believe, around the 1730s. It took a number of years. Uh, it was a guy called James Hamilton the first. There was two James Hamiltons and uh, he was Lord Limerick. He, called, he traded under different names, Lord Roden. Uh, uh, we have Earl Street called after him as well. There's about 13 different streets in Dundalk uh, named after him. But the Lord Limerick Embankment was uh, built, uh, it's, it reclaimed around, uh, I think, around two or 3,000 uh, um, acres of ground uh, in the, this area of, of Dundalk and it uh, kept the flood out. In fact, uh, I was told by an elderly person, they remembered the uh, sea coming up to the back gate of the old Protestant church uh, on Mary Street, uh, right up all the way. And uh, uh, certain in Sea Town and places along there were were prone to flooding. And in my own time now, I have noticed that flooding has become more pronounced, particularly up the RD Road. I see it in Pierce Park. Particularly, I suppose, the first time I noticed it to some great effect was on the Castletown Road, where it, the the bridge where the bridge was, that, that way it became very badly flooded in several locations. And um, I, I just wondered, why was this happening and what, what could we do to preserve it? And then I it was to read the Copenhagen meeting of the climate change people started to speak up and uh, I realised that we were in it, this whole idea of climate change. Now, there are a lot of naysayers about it, a lot of people who would say that it doesn't exist, it's a figment of the imagination, but I think you want to be terribly blind, if not totally deaf, to, uh, not to realise that um, 
that it's happening and it's coming quicker than we realise. We're told that the melting of the ice caps yeah, is happening at such an alarming rate uh, that we could have a metre to two metres of a rise in the sea levels around the, uh, the world if we're mined around Dundalk. And if that were to happen, Dundalk, would, uh, I would reckon that could be up to 10,000 premises, uh, houses or homes could be under, under a metre or maybe a, a couple of feet of water. And we've seen this in places that never experienced uh, flooding before. So flooding is a real danger and it's only came, uh, the media has brought it to our attention now in recent times. I remember uh, down, I was, went home to the west of Ireland where I come from and I was coming back from Galway and uh, I, and the new road into Galway and I was amazed that they, as far as the eye could see in both directions, travelling around that new road, uh, there was just like a sea. The, the, the flooding, this was around 2009. And at that time, I, when I came back uh, to Nandok, I was coming back for a council meeting, I had got a, an email from one of the engineers here in town, and uh, he told me that the Lord Limerick Embankment was at serious risk of being washed away from flooding and I've been watching that for say, with it uh, with bated breath as it were certainly uh, very much uh, fearful that if it were to happen I reckon that about three and a half maybe five thousand homes in the immediate vicinities around the the bay will be it will be under serious water damage and the cost to repair is the you know life will be lost uh, as well from it you know that it's, it's a, a serious a very serious issue that's brilliant. I'm and you've joking. just covered a load of me questions yeah, there as well. I wish I'd in, <laughs> no, in a very comprehensive way, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's that's brilliant. Yeah. Um well that kind of told us when did you become actively involved in it? Oh yeah, okay. So we pick up now with um where other people in the council as concerned right, as you, you just, uh, yeah. stop that there no uh, while the Lewis, do you want to get your yeah. pages in yeah. that so yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the ruffle's not picking up. Oh that's sorry, grand. sorry about that. Well, that's yeah. good, that's cool there, yeah, yeah. What I was going to say, right, okay. Well, m my question then is kind of asking you about sh how the, count the rest of the council sort of received this and dealt with the information and um, what we're seeing is the barriers to repair and, and upgrading the embankment. Do you want to go that far yet or do you yeah, want to talk, you know, you talk no. more about Borick first if you want to or whatever? Uh, well, I, I have, um, let me see, get Borick here. Well, no, whichever, yeah. whichever, whatever. There's whatever one thing I was going to say, let me see, let me, let me roll here on this That's one That's grand. Um, you need to work away. <laughs> you know, <coughs> well, Porrick um, uh, McEvitt's. Uh, sorry, yeah, I that wrong. Sorry. I was talking about Porrick Herr. Porrick Herr, yes, you see, I had Porrick Herr and uh, McEvitt had a uh, two to two with him over over as well. Right, right. <laughs> he's he's the local uh, climate. He's the green man. Oh. Uh, he he uh, he, uh, he maintained. I have a, a, a reply to him. We had a bit of a spat on the pay right. on the. On the uh, but he maintains that I had, a, you know, that a misunderstanding of it. But anyway, oh. that, that's sorry. Right. Go ahead. Um, I suppose uh, uh, you were asking me. Uh, um, th uh, sorry. Um, Cause do you want to ask yeah. a question then? And yeah. 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 Well, which which question? Yeah, what are we up to now? Yes. I, I have the other people in the council. Mm, right. Is that? Yeah. Well, I, I, I when I raised the issue that. Uh, that Porrick Herr had brought to my attention, the engineer, that they said that the uh, the Lord Limerick embankment was at serious risk of being washed away, and that was way back in December two thousand and nine. I raised, I asked that uh, at the council meeting we had a council meeting following just shortly after that that his email would be would be would be addressed, you know, what the content of it that uh, we discuss it as members, and because at the at the at the council meetings we had have. The town engineer, we'd have the county manager, we'd have all the planning, the planning people, all the experts that we have here. We pay them very well to do a job to, uh, to look after the welfare of the people and the town. Uh, that I thought that you know that would be willing to have a, an open discussion on the concerns. If something like three and a half thousand homes in our vicinity could be could be covered with water or destroyed that it was an urgent matter and it was kind of brushed under the carpet I got the feeling that it wasn't on the agenda it couldn't be addressed it had so I put in a notice of the motion about it because one of the things that annoyed me with was that we had uh, 
something like seven or eight very expensive reports done uh, over 10 years from about 2000 uh, which was uh, we had a rep- uh, we spent well over a million pounds uh, which if it was spent wisely we could have repaired the the Lord Limerick Embankment and my view of the Lord Limerick Embankment is this that it's a fantastic facility for the people because not only does it ser- would it serve to protect these all these homes around the Dundalk uh, from being flooded and uh, being uh, being undermined in, in in that way but if it was properly raised and and maintained it could p- provide a uh, a walkway, a greenway from between uh, uh, Dundalk and Black Rock. And I notice a lot of people nowadays are very health conscious and like to go out for maybe a three or four uh, mile or uh, five or six kilometres, if we're in now in kilometres, uh, walkway. And this is an ideal uh, opportunity to do this, that we could make it into a great walkway for people, a safe way for people to go out and exercise, all uh, for bring families, young people, could even put in a cycle way in it as well to people rather to take the pressure off the main the main road and i thought it would be investment in the future and we could in fact over time maybe link up with the carlingford walkway greenway there and this says it was coming into vogue at the time but again there was no appetite for it and i was amazed that we had spent well over a million pounds we had uh, various consultancies reports provided from uh, Kirk McClure M- Morton, RSP, R- uh, Royal Haskany, Tobins, uh, Indicon, Buchanan's, Ferguson McElwee, and a whole host of others. All these reports. Again, how to, to defend Dundalk from the idea of coastal flooding and so forth. And, you know, it, it, there was no great appetite to to pursue the matter as far as I could see. I used to get annoyed with this. They thought I was kind of some harebrain that was trying to say something that this was irrelevant. And we're seeing it as coming closer and closer that people's homes and people's livelihoods and people's lives uh, as put at risk. And I think they have forgotten the fact that a guy called Eric uh, McKeown uh, in, uh, I think it was October uh, 1981, it was out and uh, looking after cattle and the, the tide he was about two feet deep, and he was washed away, uh, and and he died as a result. And we had again uh, in February two thousand and two, we had another major uh, uh, flooding incident, which happened down at the Keys, where, I mean, the spirit store was 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 covered, in, I think, a foot or two of water, and the basements along there, and a lot of premises there were damaged at the time, and again a small bit of expense. Yeah, but I'm the part of the council to remedy the would remedy a lot of this, and we had spent all these uh, all this money getting consultancies to come in and tell us what we should do and how we could develop, particularly the northern end of the town and this along by the coastline, to how we could make better use to improve our harbour here, to improve the the quality of life for people and the people that, as I said, that used to annoy me and still annoys me that we pay a very very we paid them very well, you know, as a, as to run the, the affairs of the town. They're totally oblivious, or they seem to be oblivious, to, uh, to the need of to protect the people for which the people have paid their fines, they paid their rates, they paid the, all the charges for one thing or another, and yet the money. That's essential things like protection of the life and safety of people is, to me, is being ignored, and I, it used to gall me, and they saw me as some kind of, kind of a, a, a one of these fellows that's causing trouble. I was a troublemaker in that sense, so he had to be got rid of, and uh, I felt there was uh, no appetite to do it. And I think in around 2002, there was something like 1.24 million uh, uh, pounds or euros made available in the budget uh, to, to do the Lord Limerick embankment and to improve that. And that was washed away as well. It never, it never happened. It whittled away. So to me, I just said there is an indifference. There's a lack of urgency. There's a lack of concern. It, it seems to me, you know, and maybe I'm getting it wrong. Now, I also pr- propose that uh, we have in the council. We're very fortunate to have very highly qualified, very experienced, uh, very intelligent. Uh, 
expertise in, on the council itself. We shouldn't be spending one and a half million in getting these expert reports done by ex uh, outsiders. The people who know the ground, who are here working with the people, who know the area, like our town planners, like our engineers, uh, and so forth, they have the competence, in my view, uh, to prepare a very worthwhile uh, practical solution to uh, enhancing the town. I think there was a, you know, uh, my I, I come from a background. My father was a was a tradesman. He was a carpenter by trade, but he was a building contractor. And we dealt with building and land and dealing with the idea of flooding and so forth. I have a small bit of knowledge of how you can how you can protect uh, people from their homes from being be, being inundated with with flooding. And yet. Uh, uh, no matter my my pleas were went unheard, un un unheeded, and while at the time uh, people said, well maybe there's something in it, but they didn't bother to find out, and that's why I say why did we do all these reports? Now as I said, six or seven reports were made at a huge cost, something like a hundred and fifty thousand or so, maybe up to two and a, um, a quarter of a million at a time, and I asked that these reports be made available to the engineering section of the uh, DKIT and a copy put into the local library so that anybody could go in, because it was our money, that they could, particularly the students who are learning engineering technologies and so forth, that they would have direct access to the studies that were done and how to uh, Im improve or b better Dundalk. And that was again ignored. That was pie in the sky as far as they were concerned. It wasn't put in. So I'm angry over that. Because uh, when I went to look for those reports, they, uh, I was told that they, they, they don't know where they are. They were filed away somewhere. God only knows where they are. But why do we spend so much money in getting all these reports and yet do nothing about them? To me, that is criminal. Mm. That is, that's immoral, in my view. You know, I, mean, uh, I, th I think that's scandalous. That it couldn't be that, that, that uh, if we spend so much money and... I uh, mean, mean, think of Lord Limerick. Way back in 1730, built the built the embankment, and it served as well for the almost 300 years, and that was built by the sweat of ordinary people working with horse carts, shovels and spades and pickaxes. That was the level of technology. They didn't have any earth movers or any cranes or any kind of uh, uh, this uh, new technologies that we have t available today to get the job done in in a fraction of the time. They did that over a number of years, and. Nothing has, virtually nothing has been spent by our local authorities down the years in trying to upgrade it or to improve it. And as I said earlier, that this could be a fantastic facility for Dundalk, a tourist potential. It could be, you know, apart from protecting the, the homes of three and a half thousand people, or their homes and premises and businesses, but it would be a, an attraction uh, for tourism. It would be in advance the health and safety of people, and yet it's been uh, laid there to wither away and to be, be grown, overgrown with with wines and or thistles and every kind of you think. Instead, maybe a couple of th uh, maybe a half a million or a million, and we had 1.24 million set aside in 2002, I think it was, uh, to do that. And year after year, I've tried to raise this in the media and try to and. Uh, Again, uh, we were told that it, there was a, the part of the OPW were doing a survey on, on flooding, and they have come in with uh, with the with the survey, but it they're so sluggish and so slow and so tardy about doing it that it'll be another century before anything real will happen. You know, one of the the problems we have, you know, and we're seeing it more recently. Uh, one of my past pupils, a young Goss, uh, there a few years ago. You remember we had a, a, a big storm come into Dundalk, a whole country. What was it? Um, I'm trying to think of the name of now. Uh, uh, the, each of these storms have given a special name, you know, at the time. But um, uh, he was coming back from work uh, because it was the, the storm was so bad. And he, he, he was killed on the way home. But uh, as I said, we had Eric, Mc, uh, er Eric McKeown. He lost his life before. Uh, but this, uh, anyway, what I was, the point I was going to make was that we are now experiencing far more uh, these uh, outrageous weather situations with big storms coming. Uh, if we have, uh, say, uh, high tides 
and you have it happens at a where there is a, what you call the this the uh, high, the there was a surge, a big surge, uh, with the um, with and a storm force went. That a combination of these weather conditions, uh, they, they it's quite likely that they, 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 there may be a ten meter wave of water will 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 flood half the town, if not all of it, and that's a, that's a uh, can really happen, and we should be preparing. Not uh, a stitch in time to say saves nine. And that's what I'm calling for, that a little bit incremental, a bit year on year, not to, to go overboard and spending a huge amount of money doing a job that half done. You take a section, like if they take it now and clear it and uh, and uh, look after the weaker parts along the, the embankment and build on that year on year, uh, we could have a, f f a great facility, a great protection, and we would secure people for the future. You know, so um, that's my, my hope. Mm. You know, if I was to make a contribution to the town, I would hope that I would raise the consciousness and get people to get off their backsides and do something worthwhile to uh, to see that this happens. Because, as I said, apart from Lord Limerick, who was a very practical man, who was a man who, a businessman at heart, he had left money to, he died before the job was finished, mm. and it is after he dying, Apparently, the work ceased, and nothing, virtually nothing, has been spent over the years since. So I think it's time that we say we that we had took a, a real serious, genuine look at it and see how we could actually um, turn this embankment into a facility, a, a, a worthwhile facility for the town. I well, I was I was trying to do something. Sometimes, you know. Uh, I, I suppose I'm not a prophet in my own town, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I was the t it's my adopted town, and I came here and I have done a number of things over the years, um, and this was to me. I felt you know that I wanted to do s to make a mark, to make a difference, and one of them was to see that uh, we could protect the premises and the lives of and the businesses of people in the town, and that we would develop the town. Particularly, uh, you know, uh, down by the sea town, particularly on the northern end of the town, mm -hmm. which to me is a scandalous neglect over the years. Yeah. I grew up in Bread Street. Yeah, yeah. I lived, I lived in <laughs> Bread, Bread Street for one year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I, I ch tried to champion that, and uh, all the development took on the, on the southern side of the town, not on the northern side. Yeah. And they closed down the the town dump, and we were promised. Uh, that we would have five football pitches developed there, and those pitches uh, have never materialised. Mm, uh, uh, the, there was also a lot of gas uh, because of the decomposition of the materials mm, are in the dump. The dump yeah. That that gas there could have been piped out, yeah. and would have provided a heating facility or could maybe natural gas uh, for the uh, uh, the, the, the people living in nearby. Was the dump uh, where the recycling centre is now? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's out there. Uh, the dump there, you can see it. Uh, but it, 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 they were going to develop that into an, an amenity for the town. Mm. And again, that was promised. Mm. At the at council meeting, I was there, went out looking, and I raised the issue of, of, of making use of the gas that's been, been exuded from there mm. year and year. And that would have provided a heating facility for the town mm. or maybe could put to a better use rather than let it kind of escape into the atmosphere. Oh, I couldn't understand why. Say we these reports are brilliantly done now, and maps and everything else, and not one copy was ever put up in the library. In the county library, unbelievable, or in the in the in the TKIT library, yeah. and all these students that are learn, you know, engineering, yeah. structural engineering, you know, uh, marine engineering, the whole works, <laughs> couldn't be put.